So I just moved these chickens and ducks down to some fresh grass here for them to enjoy. Prior to that, they were working on clearing out these beds for me right in here. There was things growing in here, just unwanted plants, and they did a good job going to town, removing all that, and tilling it up for me, and adding some nice manure. So I'm gonna let these beds rest for a couple weeks, but in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and move the fence down so they won't have access to this area anymore. Well, that was a couple days ago, and since then, the chickens and ducks have mowed down this grass really well. And they really do a great job of weeding and mowing in pasture areas, lawns, as well as in garden beds, as you saw in my garden beds from earlier. And they even, chickens can even provide some minimal tillage to help just kind of till, lightly till, the soil for you to help prep your garden beds. And I know what's going on globally. I know it's inspiring many of you to start garden, start a garden now. Some of you may have gardened in the past or maybe some of you are doing it for the first time and you wanna know what is the quickest way that I can start a garden now. Well, this way right here with using chickens and ducks is not the fastest way, nor is using tarps, which we do here as well. We use tarps to uh, prep our beds and what that does is Putting a tarp over your area that you're going to do for your garden is it will kill and suppress the weeds and allow you once you pull the tarp off after a certain time period uh, to have your soil ready to be planted. And with the tarps, it's, they're also good at increasing the worm activity in the soil. Something about those worms being covered up in that soil really makes the the worms more active and and providing some good worm castings and just really working your soil so that too is another good way but not the fastest way to start a garden and some of you are probably starting from your garden beds in areas that have are growing grass right now and you want to know i really want to start a garden but what do i do well let me show you Well, if you have an area kind of like this with light weed pressure and the plants are still young, maybe it's an area that you gardened in last year and things haven't really gone crazy. What you can do is you can take a stirrup hoe, also called a scuffle hoe, or a wheel hoe and just rip these right out of the ground fairly easy. And then after that, just rake them out of your bed and then your bed is mostly ready for you to plant in. You can plant in immediately after that, or you can add compost and an all-purpose fertilizer. Another thing you could do if the weed pressure isn't too heavy is take a broad fork, especially if you have compacted soil, heavy clay, and use a broad fork to aerate your soil, and then from there bring in a tiller and just kind of blend it in and maybe add some compost to loosen that soil up. But with doing that, you can cause unwanted plants, weed seeds, to rise up to where you're germinating them. So that's something to think about. But if you are trying to do an area where it's just gotten crazy, overgrown, or maybe it's an area you haven't gardened in before, then let me show you something else. Or you may have an area like this right here where the grass is a couple inches tall, this one was, and I had to come through with a weed eater and weed it down. You could also use a mower to do the same, and then rake out the cuttings from the bed. But then after you're done with that, you're left with this right here, where it's too strong, too mature to use the stirrup hoe, really, without killing yourself to get it out. So what do you do? Well, it, you could easily take something like a BCS walk behind tractor and just peel it all up and, and prep it. But most of us don't have those tools. And a lot of people, when you're just getting started, 
you don't have the tools. You probably don't have a cultivator, mini cultivator, nonetheless, a BCS walk behind tractor. So what do you do? Well, let's gather a couple items that most of us can easily acquire to get your garden started right now. For the past several weeks, my family and I, we have been growing our plants here in our greenhouse. And uh, for some of you, you may not have the option of growing in, in a greenhouse. And one plant that we didn't get started the way we wanted to was eggplant. So I actually had to buy my eggplant here. And for some of you, you may have to do that. And what I recommend is not necessarily going to your big box hardware stores. Go to contact your local farmers, nurseries, nurseries in your area, and even your small family owned local hardware stores and ask them if they sell starts. And it can actually save you a lot of money and a lot of times you can find them to be organic. And this eggplant here is actually going to be what we're going to transplant today. You guys ready to do some planting? Some are happier than others. Some are over the top happy. <laughs> but let's go ahead and get started here. And uh, to use with our planting, since we have the grass over there, like I just showed you, we're going to use this. You know what's in there, Josiah? Mm -mm. No, they don't either. Well, it's a it's something that probably most people have or can have access to, and that is newspaper. So. To suppress the weeds, we are going to be using newspapers. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and dig our holes. And with eggplant, they need to be about 18 to 24 inches apart. So we're going to dig holes specifically for our eggplant to go in. Alright. We're going to start off by digging a hole for our first plant. You can use one of the little garden uh, trials, but we're just going to use a shovel here. Most people have that. We're just going to dig a hole. That'll be for our first plant, but there's more steps to that. I'm going to show you in just a second. But I'm going to have these guys go ahead and space out our the next holes for when I dig. So Sayla, if you could go through each hole that I have. Let's start with this hole right here. The, the spacing is 18 to 24 inches for eggplant. We're gonna go, we're gonna say 20. So Josiah, you have blocks there. You're just gonna place leg of the block right there at the 20 mark. Okay, and then space it out again. So right now, a lot of kids aren't in school, so getting them involved in gardening and planting can be good for the whole family. You can take this dirt, put it in the compost somewhere out of the way, or make a compost pile. If you haven't one, don't have one already. Beginnings of one, the real small beginnings. You got that shovel. Alright, now that we have our holes dug, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add some fertilizer and some compost in the holes for our transplants to go in. You don't have to add either one. It's not totally essential, but uh, especially if you're in your crunch and you just need to start growing something. But um, you may want to add just an overall all-purpose fertilizer if you can. I also, I'm actually adding more than that since I know where our soil is. I know that we're low on phosphorus, so we're adding that as well, as, as well as a couple other things. Uh, but I'm also adding the compost into just to continue to add and improve on our soil uh, fertility, looseness, quality all around. So um, that's what we're gonna do. But like I said, you could also just 
put your plant in there, transplant in there, and then you could break this off and then add just back the soil from uh, what you took out of there. But we're not gonna do that. All right, so we're gonna grab a little bit of our fertilizer, sprinkle it on in there. Which, which one did you want? These are Japanese. And these are... Just roll with it, with everything. So then we're at our compost in too, with our fertilizer. And then our plant, right there. And we're just gonna keep adding around it. Just like that. Put that in there so we know which one it is. And then we have this tag here, it says Japanese eggplant on it. And we'll add that, just like Lacey said, so we know what the plant is. <laughs> Not everybody in our household like likes eggplant, but I do, especially eggplant parmesan. It's quite good, quite delicious. <laughs> do you like eggplant? Let me know in the comment section below. So a lot of times when you buy your own plants, I'm gonna show you something. So when you're, when you're buying your plants, look for cells that actually contain two different plants. So see, two are in one cell and you can divide them and they each have a pretty good root base. So then you have two plants instead of just one. It's a two for one deal. I don't want to put dumb, dumb dirt in. Come on this side. You can do it. It'll work if we do that. Come right here and put dirt in with me. Use two hands. You got two hands. God gave you two. There you go. Don't put it on there. Remember, I talked about putting things on the plant. Put it around it. Oh. Yeah, slide down, slide it on down. We're going to the next plant. Okay, next we're gonna add our newspaper as a weed barrier around our plants. And that will save you from having to do all the work of trying to get rid of them. It'll suppress it naturally or as a part of the process for you. So what we're gonna do is, uh, one of the first thing you wanna do to make sure you do is make sure that you don't have any types of plants, that, unwanted plants growing around there that would, that would puncture right through your paper. Uh, so, and just pull those out. This is actually some old arugula that we have in there. So just kind of moving those a little bit. Uh, once your grass gets too thick, better off using cardboard which I'll show you here after uh, on another crop that we're going to plant uh, but for for the eggplants here we're just going to place these right around then we're going to water it to keep it down and then we're going to add some compost on top of it you can do compost or potting mix and you can get bags of those at your local hardware store uh, but I do recommend going to one of your local supply soil supply center and they're usually for landscapers and people who do that type of work and you're gonna, it's gonna save you a ton of money. All right, so we put our newspaper down a few inches away from the stem of our plant and then we're just gonna mist it, mist the newspaper so that way it keeps it down so the wind doesn't blow it away as we're trying to work with it. And now that the newspaper's down, I'm gonna take our soil here, a compost, potting mix, whatever you use, and we're going to put it right on top of the newspaper and you want to put it on anywhere from about one to three inches on top of that and that will help press everything down and, sh and block out the light for, for and preventing those weeds from coming up and pushing through there. There you have it. This looks a lot different than it did not too long ago. All within about an hour time period, you can get, you can go from grass to having your garden bed ready with growing something. And, and it we doesn't have, have to be eggplant. No, it doesn't have to be, be eggplant. Pretty much anything. That's exactly right. It could be tomatoes. It could be cucumbers. It could be, Peppers. like you said, just name it. It could be that. Um, I probably would do lettuce, I would do lettuce slightly different. I would go ahead and I wouldn't dig the hole and then plant it. I would go ahead and still put the, uh, the newspaper down, then put your, um, your potting mix, your whatever, your compost, your soil on top of that, 
real heavy and deep. You don't have to have it super deep, but uh, the lettuce roots don't go really deep, but uh, I would go right on top of over there. talking about buying soil in bulk earlier and how it saves you so much money and it does we got I think four yards of compost garden mix the other day in the other video if you missed it go back and check it out but we got that and it's so much easier to have a bunch right here on our farm on our homestead and uh, it's so much easier to shovel it from the ground instead of having to shovel it out of the truck. So there's many benefits of going ahead and having abundance right there if you're able to. Because in the beginning we weren't able to. We actually had to sift our dirt through a metal grate to have any soil to even work with whenever we first started our homestead. So you just gotta work with what you got but if you can't make it easier for yourself, do it, it's worth it. Alrighty, for our next beds, we're gonna be planting squash. And instead of using the newspaper for our easy to start beds, we're gonna be using cardboard this time, like I'd mentioned earlier. And this is actually some cardboard that we had left over from our fruit trees that we got from Stark Brothers and in our permaculture orchard in the making right here so um also if you're looking to get some fruit trees you can get a discount and i'll include that information in the show notes below so we're going to use this cardboard and we're also going to gather some more cardboard and cardboard can have a number of different uses on the homestead like we're doing now with suppressing weeds but we also use it as as a fire starter for a wood stove as well so uh we're going to get some more cardboard that we have saved from all our different Amazon deliveries, which you probably have as well. All right, we have our compost here, our cardboard boxes, and our squash plant. And this area will actually be the first time that we have grown anything here. So these, these will be new beds in the making and they've had grass, that's, there's been grass growing here for some time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use cardboard boxes here, which will are, are sturdier and will help suppress those stronger weeds easier than the newspaper. And uh, we recently cleared out a number of trees here. Before that, we weren't able to grow things successfully here because they were it was shaded so much, even during the summertime. We actually had, we have an apple tree here and we used to have a plum tree and another apple tree, but they died off. And as you can see, this tree wasn't able to really branch out well and develop branches this way. So, but now that the trees are gone, it should be able to do that. And we should be able to grow things right in this area. And we're gonna start off the same way we did with the eggplant, with digging our holes. This dirt is definitely harder to uh, shovel. Especially with being this North Carolina clay that we have here. So right now I'm just pulling the tape off of these boxes. You know, we don't always get every single piece of tape off, but for we try to get the majority off because it's not going to break down and uh, you'll end up having to clean it up at some point in time. So we just try to go ahead and do it now so we don't have to deal with it later. Because I've had that happen before. Oh. 
with everything going on, it makes me think and realize that we should really all strive to grow and produce more of our own. Not depend on the government to do it for us. Not even depend on grocery stores to be filled. But to get back to us all producing something where we live. I also want to mention that you could use wood chips or mulch instead of the compost like we're using here or, or instead of potting mix. And uh, if you use that, it would be like doing the, the back to Eden gardening. And uh, that would work really well for plants that are going to stay in the area for a longer period of time. So say if we were here and we did squash here this year and we put the mulch or wood chips on, next year we could do something like peppers or something like that and uh, we just open up your mulch or wood chips and plant again. Finishing up right here. Done! And each bed took about an hour to do. So that gives you an idea of how you can start growing food right now, super easy, super fast going from having grass to producing food for you and for your family. And I do want to mention don't get caught up in having everything perfect, having everything whether it be a permaculture or monoculture or teal or no teal. In the end the main thing is if you're hungry that you have food to eat and I give, we just gave you an idea of how you can start producing food on your own right now.